Hello everybody, my name is Ryan. This is my review of Westworld Season 1, Episode 9. This episode blew the roof off the series and basically confirmed that this is another HBO show that we have to watch Episode 9 live. And that's why I watched this one live, because I was not getting spoiled for this. Fuck Tara and Heath on The Walking Dead. Uh, this episode was really interesting, revealed a lot. I can't wait to get into it. Some of my theories were right. We're not going to spoil anything until uh, we get past the intro. I think that this episode was fantastic leading into the finale. It revealed a lot on its own, and I can't wait to see what happens next. This is Nerd. <laughs> So I feel like I say this every week, let's start off with what happened last, because of course that's what we're all obsessing about, because I started reviewing this once the big twist started happening. So, uh, big twist, Bernard is a replica of Arnold, and Dolores killed Arnold. I would like to direct you to my video that I made two days ago, saying all of this exactly. So, with that out of the way, I called it, we're gonna, there we go, I just want to say, I told you so, for those that didn't believe, no one really disagreed with me though, so... There you go. Uh, moving on from that, I think that the reveal was huge and really well done. I think that because of how much there was going into this, and after only nine episodes, how much is still really going on and really unfolding about everything, that having all of this kind of culminate in this way, and it was a long reveal. It took a while to get to the point that they were getting to, and I was like already getting up and saying, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, what, like while they were going through it, because it had become sort of fairly obvious, but halfway through what was happening, and, like, it was just weird to kind of keep going through, because what I will say is it was really cool how they built everything, like, brought everything together, like Dolores walking to the church and everything, get going through, seeing everyone dead and whatever, I wonder what's happening there, because they didn't, I guess they sort of explained that, I'm assuming Dolores did that, but moving on as we go through it, we're kind of sort of confirming a few things along the way. First off, uh, Dolores is probably retracing her footsteps and just kind of trying to find her way back to where she was, and I feel like that is definitely almost sort of confirmed at this point, uh, but we don't totally know, and we also don't totally know how to piece all the timeline stuff together. I feel like that's going to require a rewatch to sort of uh, understand all of Dolores' timeline, but I feel like at this point we have all the stuff we need to really understand everything, especially because this episode ends with her going with the man in black. So I'm assuming that we're confirming two or more timelines, William is the man in black, and that's kind of going to be revealed next episode. And uh, I think that this episode, again, this show, I feel like last episode they went on and did a lot of things that sort of confirmed everything. Like uh, when I was doing my video talking about Bernard is Arnold, it was, it was a lot of like, you look at all this evidence piece together, really hard to disagree with it. There's just a lot of really hard things to disagree with once you piece them all together. And I feel like the show is doing that to the point where the 20 minute Arnold reveal was, yeah, it was good. It wasn't the best thing. Cause again, it already, already pieced it, pieced it together. So I like that they also threw the Dolores thing to kind of add more weight to the big reveal and everything. I really enjoyed the big twist. I think that, uh, you know, Bernard, as he's now going to be called, uh, and Ford, their scenes throughout the episode were some of my favorite. I think that having that big build up, because you kind of knew once he brought in, like, hey Ford, maybe I can kill you, you kind of knew at that point, shit's going to go down, we're really going to figure out what's happening here. So I like that we got so many big reveals, like we found out what happened to Elsie, for sure, like she got attacked by Bernard, like, she's probably dead, uh, but it really wouldn't surprise me if she's going to be a robot from now on, because her signal is not on her, it seems, and Ford was making this new robot body, so, or android body, host body, down in episode 7. Jonathan Nolan says that's not going to be anyone spe uh, specific, he just says it's going to be another host body, I don't believe that at all, and I think that's definitely going to be uh, android host version of Elsie, who is now under uh, Bernard uh, Ford's control, because it seems like people die in this company, they just get replaced by hosts. And that's a scary thing, but you're not really that secure for a job, because you don't really need it. They'll make a host version of it. Anyway, moving on, uh, I thought that that big reveal, that having going into Bernard's mind was fantastic. And as soon as he started asking questions about Arnold again, we were getting closer to that, and I loved that. I love how we were piecing everything together, so it's not just totally out of left field. You see how everything came together, and I like going into Bernard's mind, and, you know, kind of cluing into everything and how it was going down, exploring more of his family, and I'm I'm curious to see how, if they're going to keep Jeffrey Wright on the show, because we now know that he 
is Arnold. So I'm wondering if they're going to say, okay, Bernard died, he's off the show now, or they're going to bring him back to be Arnold once in a while. Because that's what I'm assuming they're going to do. Either way, I'm really excited to see what's going to happen. I think that uh, it's going to be really cool. And I like going into Bernard's mind and just going into, like, the depths of a robot's mind is very interesting. So I like moving on that. Uh, investigating Maeve. Uh, fucking finally, the episode begins, and Bernard is saying, hmm, something's wrong with Maeve. Took you fucking long enough. She's been, through like this whole season, she's just been progressively getting to the point of becoming Skynet. And finally, someone notices. The bad thing, it was another host that noticed. And to me, I'm just waiting for Ford or someone to say, wait, maybe she's trying to take over the Westworld or whatever. Or maybe uh, Felix and Sylvester to go, you know, when she's, not, like, to spend some of the time when she's not controlling them, putting knives to their throat and say, Hey, listen, something's horrifically wrong with Maeve. We need to stop that. Because I, I understand, like, when she's there and pressing a knife to Syl Sylvester's neck, like, maybe you don't want to run away then, but, you know, later, when she's in the park, just go and be like, hey, uh, something's very wrong. So I'm glad that someone fucking finally found out that something was wrong with Maeve. It was nice that someone found that out at this point, after everything that's happening here. Maeve in this episode is really fun. Uh, of course, I really like her. She's one of my favorite characters in the show. Uh, her scenes with Lawrence were awesome. They were, it was cheeky dialogue, and I really liked it. And I think that uh, those two have really cool chemistry. And I can't wait to see how they're going to kind of move on, because it looks like she's now recruiting him. And that's a powerful pairing, and I really... I really just can't wait to see how that's going to move forward, so I'm interested to see how they're going to move along with that, and if it's going to become like, hey, Bonnie and Clyde, except, oops, we're trying to start a robot revolution. I don't know if it's going to go that far, but hey, I'm kind of hoping that it will, because that would be super fun. I don't, I don't know exactly, but I really like their chemistry together, their dialogue, the kind of back and forth they had. I thought it was awesome, and I just I kind of want more of that. Logan and William in this episode, that was another... Just a big part of this. Again, another theory that they're essentially saying before everything kind of happens. And I know that there was a lot of speculation over the past few weeks of, uh, you know, the, um, William being the man in black. That was something I got just from episode two, just because I could see that, that story felt so similar to how the Westworld movie went. And I feel like that could have been the reason the whole story was there, but it also felt like this doesn't connect to anything else. And if this is going to be a main plot line, it's probably going to be something overall connecting. And it just felt like, hey... Man who has no backstory, man who we're seeing entering the park for the first time. It, it felt like it just kind of went together. So I'm curious to see how that. Who I was, cur I was curious to see. Let's say how that's going to move forward. Over the past few weeks, I keep feeling like they're just confirming more and more this two timelines. William equals the man of black theory. If you don't agree with it, I mean that's fine. But I really feel like, like over every episode, I've been saying, oh, I guess this confirms it. Well, I guess this really confirms it. Well, now I don't see how the. At this point, I don't see how the fuck they're going to get around it. It's essentially written in stone by now because of all the evidence and clues they've dropped. So I'm curious to see if we're actually if that's not going to be the case because, honestly, that would be the bigger surprise at this point if William wasn't the man in black. Because I was thinking, maybe it's Logan. He does seem the eviler of the two. But no. Now, at the end of this episode, we make it very clear that uh, William is the, e the most evil of the two. And I think that th there was a lot of really cool... Uh, connections in this. So first off, there was the photo that Logan holds up, which I thought, hey, maybe this confirms, maybe this denies uh, the two timelines theory. Who knows how they're going twi to uh, twist this. And I like that th this show's very two-faced. It talks to both theories, both like deniers and confirmers at the same time, and I think that that's really fun, so I really enjoyed that. And seeing the photo, I was thinking, well, maybe he's going to like drop it, and that's why it'll be all like kind of torn up and stuff. Or maybe there's like two of them, and that's why, like, he's connections. Who knows? The point is, it's a photo Abernathy saw, and once he took it out, it was big answers to who the fuck was in that photo, even though it really wasn't even that big of a question. It was more like, hey, here's a thread we left making something out of it, and I thought that was really fun to move off of. I really liked Logan and William's dynamic in this episode. Uh, Logan kind of tearing open Dolores was really, really awesome and kind of weird, and I, I don't want to say gross, because just the instinct of someone tearing someone open, like, with their face, like, cutting them, and, like, eh, look inside them. That's kind of gross. But she's just, like, wires and stuff. So it was, was kind of just cooler than it was gross. I, I enjoyed it, let's say that. And I enjoyed the moment it was for Dolores. And again, the Dolores stuff, that timeline is going to be something I have to rewatch this whole season to try and piece together how the fuck Dolores' timeline really makes sense at this point. Uh, but I'm curious to do it. Maybe it'll be my next Westworld video. Who the fuck knows? It's really... 
really strange at this point. Uh, moving on, I think that Logan and William in this episode, they just had really cool chemistry. I really like the transformation. You could kind of see that maybe William isn't totally, you know, fought, like, going along with Logan as he says he is, because he's very much like, oh, Dolores is gone now, I'm not going to get anywhere, just sitting here. But I'd be like, hey, yeah, it's okay, I get it, blah, 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 and then I'm going to kill everyone while they're asleep. And that's kind of what happened. And oh my god, was that actually, like, I don't know if what all that, that he did was William, because holy shit, was there a lot of, like, murder there. There was people like missing legs and arms and if, if it, like this would be really great build up for the man in black but it did feel like sort of a leap for William to take as a character. It felt like yes we're really diving into this character being super fucking evil but he hasn't really seemed super fucking evil until he did all this and seemingly like fucking cut people's legs off. Like people are missing legs and arms like he brutally murders them and I could really see seeing this you know him kind of killing everybody, slicing them up, shooting them, and they're all just trying to shoot them and, like, they can't. And you intersplice that with scenes of, like, the man in black kind of doing the same thing, just murdering people, and they're trying to shoot them, but, like, the bullets don't work. Like, I don't understand that being the reveal that they do, because the, the editing in these reveals, like, kind of going back and forth, like, hints, 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 really cool, and I really enjoy that, but who the fuck knows how they're going to do this anymore. I'm so, so involved in how this is all going to turn out, and I'm just really wondering how they're going to tie this all together. The man in black and Charlotte scene together... Uh, there were some interesting implications there. I don't know, does this mean the man in black, or I guess William at this point, probably confirmed, is going to be on the board, that he's like high up in Westworld? Who knows? I think we're going to have to, I think that's probably one of the next big things that we're going to get, and I feel like they're saving the William man in black stuff for next week. Honestly, I'm going to be more surprised if William isn't the man in black, and I feel like, who knows, maybe that's the direction they're going to go. It just feels like, this is a show that's very new, so we don't exactly know how reveals are done. With most shows, like Mr. Robot or Walking Dead, you know, shows that I review and theorize on a lot, you can kind of understand, like, Walking Dead does big lead-ups to its death, like, by having a big character episode and then killing a character off, so you can kind of understand when they're building up to a character death, and you can predict it. With... Mr. Robot, there'll be subtle hints in the background and stuff, like, ooh, there's weird things happening, like, things just kind of piece together and work, seemingly, if you look at it from this angle. That is sort of how you piece together Mr. Robot. With Westworld, we don't exactly know how they do theories and stuff yet. Assumably, they're just leaving a bread trail and, like, a, a large bread trail. Like, not crumbs, they're leaving, like, slices of bread, and then we pick up on that. So, again, we don't really know how this show does things. Maybe William won't be the man in black. I'm going to be very surprised if he isn't, though. What do you think? You can comment all your thoughts and predictions down below. You can subscribe for more Westworld videos, and apparently I'll be writing some of them. I mean, saying I call it again, I did just say that William, that Bernard is going to be a replica of Arnold and that Dolores killed him. So, haha, I win. Just going to say that now, because I'm really happy about that, and I don't want to brag too much. But if you want more Westworld theor theories that will probably be right, subscribe, give this video a like if you enjoyed, comment your thoughts and theories down below of the episode, and I'll see you all next time.